<laughs> okay, so yesterday uh, we chatted a lot about iterators in Rust, and in particular, uh, tried to figure out uh, why they're useful. And today I thought, uh, let's extend that and talk a little bit about actually implementing them. So let's do that. <laughs> uh, let's get to coding. Hopefully it will all just work. And there we go. We have the Rust playground uh, in the screen. Just um, I the book cover because it's not really super important right now. And let's get going. Okay. So what is an iterator? Well, just to double check our understanding, uh, let's kind of uh, start something that can we can iterate through. Yesterday we had uh, some things, uh, which was a vector of strings. So let's do another one of those because it was super simple and uh, pretty easy to understand. So just do one, two, and three. I might format that so that it's less ugly. <clears throat> oh, that's not legal rust. Oh, this isn't actually a phone. Yeah, it's not anything. We need a little macro in there. Format it properly um, for us. That's good. And then we want to uh, for thing and things print line. Thing. Okay, so uh, if you've done any Rust coding at all, this is probably pretty familiar. Uh, one, two, three. There we go. Right. Yay! Surprise! <laughs> uh, but wait, there's more. You know, like, uh, we're, 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 we're not done. Okay, so... Uh, now, uh, let's just say you've got, like, an arbitrary enum. And uh, we, like we've got our arbitrary data, and uh, I thought a good place to start would be like something that has a clear cycle in it. And one thing that has a relatively clear cycle are the seasons. So we've got summer, winter, spring, and apologies to any Americans who happen to be up at sort of 5 a.m. Uh, autumn. Well, probably closer to 2 a.m. over there right now. <laughs> um, now, that's great. So we've got this <clears throat> season thing uh, to create it. Uh, so if you haven't experienced the greatness of Rust yet, we use a literal syntax. Uh, the, I'll just say that it's, it's coming up to winter, actually. Yeah, it's winter now in New Zealand, so we... we, we we're, winter, we're in Winterland. Uh, this doesn't make any sense anymore. I move that up. Uh, delete all that. Craft. And let's just see what happens. The compiler will actually say, What? Like, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like, we get this craziness. So, uh, first thing to do is. You might say, ah, oh, what about this question mark? Hold the question mark in there, it changes what we're actually trying to print and kind of converts this into debug. But it says, oh, I also can't do that. Uh, but wait, we can trick it. We will get to iterators pretty soon. I just want to get some preliminaries out of the way. Uh, we can. Uh, a few compiler warnings uh, but eventually we print out winter so that's super useful um just a reminder to anyone watching the comment section is right there uh i will and like i'm actively watching the comments as well so feel free to just kind of send me a uh, send me a ping and if you somehow have managed to find yourself watching the stream somehow without Twitch, I don't know, maybe your magic, uh, go here. 
and uh, you'll find it. So what do we do now? So the first thing to note is that the iteration syntax is actually uh, implemented um, with a trait and traits are, uh, where are we? I just go doc dot rustling dot org standard editor. There it is. And I can see a whole bunch of stuff, but the biggest one that's really important is this thing here trait iterator type item function is next. We take a mutable reference to ourselves and we return an option self item. So that is the same type. So an iterator, in some sense, isn't actually required to return. The type of the thing that it's iterating which is going to become pretty important very soon when we realize uh, when we we're going to make a mistake uh, <laughs> sadly so uh, so how do we how do we turn this trait into an actual thing so we will start by importing uh via the the use keyword. We don't actually need to do this, um, but it's kind of nice to know exactly where uh, our traits come from. Um, so we bring the, the trait into local scope for season. And that's kind of useful. And our type will actually be ourself. So we'll try and do this. Um, what we're trying to do is say that actually, well, season wants to return a season next. Uh, it's like surely, surely that's fine. We we take a mutable reference to ourselves. So this is the self, the instance of the season that we are calling the next on, and we return option capitals S self, which is the type. So we return one of the variants, summer, winter, spring, autumn. Now, um, to start off with, we want to kind of use uh, the core of it is we want to match on self. So if we are winter, we would like to become spring. Oh, shoot. Singular, not plural, that's useful. And if we are spring, we then become summer. <laughs> you see, thinking, what? Is that working? And then if we are summer, we would like to become. Blah, blah, blah. What do we want to become? We want to become autumn. Everything feels so much different when you're like on screen in front of people. It's suddenly, uh, it's suddenly really difficult to make any sense at all. So thank you very much for bearing with me. It's quite useful that you've joined me for this uh, kind of useful experience. Uh, so we, we're we're in autumn now, and uh, we want to become winter again. Now, as you see, it's quite noisy with this uh, matching enums. So we'll fix that up very shortly, but we'll just focus on um, this match syntax. So if you haven't used Rust before, uh, match will, it's kind of like a switch statement, if you might have encountered that before. It's just beta, basically. Uh, so if we, uh, this thing on the left, uh, we're going to return the expression on the right. And the way that Rust works is uh, the last expression of a function returns. Um, this will actually fail to compile, I believe. Um, so what does this provide us? It provides us what we want is the ability to call next here. And so we know that we're winter. And what we want is to be is the spring to print. What happened? Oh, we've got a syntax error. That's useful. <laughs> we'll fix that. Not what I expected. Executing, executing. No, oh, oh, that's the wrong thing. It's supposed to be option. 
Boy, oh boy. But too quickly get bad results. <laughs> oh, there's a comment. Hello. Okay, so now we've got some garbage. Uh, what have we got? Standard option, option, option. A season, uh, I expected it, but I don't have it. Um, ah, here we go. Try using a variant of the expected enum. Some season spray. Okay, so what it's trying to tell us is, um, oh, actually this is more clear. Um, I found a season, uh, like a concrete instance of season, but what I really wanted was an option of season, and that's what this means. You haven't given me the option, so instead we will do something a little bit. We will actually, there's two ways that we could do this actually. So the first way I think is uglier, whereby uh, I'll just do this and I'll just do it and then explain what I'm doing next because that way you don't have to do as much multitasking. If I had popcorn or something, I, or like if I had lollies to give you, I would give you a lolly sip every third sip per oft. Um, oh, but I don't, so sadly. Um, you can't have a lolly. No. <laughs> anyway, so can't borrow season is mutable, it is not declared as mutable. Oh, okay, so what? Oh, over here. Now, I really hate the repetition in this, so. But we've got what we wanted. Okay, so we have successfully implemented iterator. So. What happens now? We'll just actually. Uh, so we we know we're spring here. Now, if we type next next, what we want is summer. Oh, we're calling it on uh, unran on on an option. So I think this is what we. I'm just going to do unwrap actually because I can't remember which method is the one. Ah, that's really fun. <laughs> okay, well, um, wait, wait, wait. I can't believe how much how entertaining it was because Something was not supposed to work, but it did. How weird. Spring. We go from spring to summer. Okay. So that's useful. So we've got iteration working. Um, actually, much faster than I can. So we can maybe move on. What happens if we do take 10? So take 10. Uh, here you have a. Actually, I'll go back a bit. Um, so we're, we're happily. We're, we're, we're nexting and we're getting a next version. I said that was another syntax that I wanted to introduce um, instead of all this repetition. So that's, um, I really hate it. So we can actually include a use statement inside a function, inside local scope. And that will actually clean up a lot of the clutter. He says, as long as he hasn't made some horrible mistake. If you, uh, oh good, okay. So I didn't forget Rust. <laughs> I didn't forget Rust. That's useful. Um, now I don't like that there's four sums there either. So. <laughs> I'm going to do something which may or might not feel right to you, um, which is to get rid of them. And use a temporary variable and then wrap that in sum. <clears throat> so if you haven't used Rust, the something is, uh, or an option is in itself an enum. Enums in Rust can take data. And so we're wrapping an enum, our season, inside another enum, an option and always saying that uh, there's always another season. So if 
uh, an upshot of this is that we've created an infinite iterator. Now, um, computers don't like infinity as we all encounter, so, so what can we do with an iterator? Um, so we've got this thing, uh, season, take four, and then this is lazily implemented, but we have to, wrap, to pull it all together in a collection, we add a collect thing. Uh, and then we will print out years. <sighs> oh, okay. It's confused because it's saying, well, actually, what do you want me to collect? Well, I can't infer the type here. So we're going to ask it to give us a vector. Now, inside the vector, we want a vector of, of seasons. Uh, but actually, Rust should be smart enough to figure this out for itself. We could explicitly say season in here, um, but I use I so bad at typos that it's sometimes easier just to kind of alight it or allow the compiler to figure it out itself. Aha! But <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> spring, spring. Actually, can you use. Oh no, you can't see what I'm actually <laughs> outputting. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Goodness me, how long has that been happening for? Probably the whole time. Awkward. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we get a warning about immutability saying season doesn't need to be mutable. But we'll get rid of that just so it's really clear. Uh, we've got an issue, and that is we return the same month every time. So. One of the things that you'll notice about the next method is that it takes a mutable reference to self. That provides the opportunity for the iterator to kind of hold some state. What we want is, uh, <laughs> what we would really, really, what we need to do effectively is to create, uh, we, but the problem is we're not storing a state. We're not actually mutating ourselves. So what we will try and do is uh, we'll actually just say that we are the following season. Like let's replace ourselves with the new with the next season. Like does that work? Like, oh buddy, I don't know. It says I wanted a mutable season rather, but instead of a concrete one, because the self here is a mutable reference. What if I say at the dereferenced element to self is following season? Does that work? Ah, uh, what? Okay, okay. Now we're getting into some borrowing issues <laughs> where you can't replace both, replace ourselves and kind of give it, we can't keep ourselves alive, ourselves alive uh, inside the core and the, we're basically kind of splitting ourselves in two. Uh, one, we're trying to retain following season in the current object, as well as returning another one which might be used for some other purpose. So you could think of, um, go back to the original season, season.next. Um, so let's say this was spring. We now have spring, would be this one. So that's, that's here, in fact, it's um, to unwrap the, the option, but whatever. Uh, but <clears throat> Spring would actually also be inside here. It lives in two places. Now, Rust is not going to be happy with that. Like, really unhappy, in fact. And so that's why it's blowing up on us. Um, so let's try, what else can we try? Well, one of the things that it can say is like, uh oh, Move value, and whenever I see move value, you know what I think? I think, you know what, I could just clone it. Uh, <laughs> I am, so we've gone up, here's our seasons. Uh, you know, if we clone this guy and then uh, actually, and then copy, like, does this work? Oh, not quite. We've got another syntax area, which, we, which I can fix. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna get rid of that line because it's not useful. Um, Oh, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Yay! 
Okay, we have created an iterator with ourselves. Um, now, uh, that's only going to work for primitive types. So if you've got a hold in state, you really need to do something else. So let's try to add some complexity because um, we are like that here in, uh, in the Rust world. So um, how about this? So we've got seasons. I, we want to be slightly more complex. Uh, and actually, I'll just, I'll, I'll actually stop there. I can either keep going with the seasons or we can just stick give onto this random number generator. Does anyone, uh, any answers to that? Um, it's completely over to you. I'm going to go with, um, with expanding this out and demonstrating the storage of local state. Uh, if I don't hear from anyone else in the chat. <laughs> it always feels kind of weird when, when no one is answering anything. Uh, but hey, there we go. Um, just as a, as a very quick reminder, um, <laughs> there's the link. <laughs> the chat room is there uh, and it's, uh, we're, we're sitting and we're waiting for you, so that's fine. <laughs> It would require a Twitch account if you don't have that. That's that's negative. Anyway, um, moving forward. So one thing that I thought we could implement was uh, a year. So uh, a year has a season. <clears throat> Might have other things too, but in this case, uh, we're simple. So we want to change this so that the year struct uh, struct is just data. Yep, we are uh, kind of like a class if you've never seen if you've never seen Rust. And what we really want is to be able to get the year to know that its season should change over time. So let's do that. Now, item does not is no longer self. It's no longer we don't want the we don't want a year to return another year. <clears throat> the iterator should return a season. Uh, but the self type variable, we can actually sneakily insert self double colon item in there. And we would like to match self dot season now. And following the season, everything sort of changes except self dot season changes. And I think. We should be pretty close. So now we've got a, a year. And I'll just create the season. We'll start in winter because that's happy. Um, now we want the year to progress one, so we'll just change that. Maybe call this um, progress. That's what happens over the course of a year. So over the course of the year, uh, we should see the seasons change. This is possibly going to die on us. It's saying that it can't be dereferenced, which is fine. Uh, we don't need to reference ourselves anymore. Here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> Simple minds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we've done here is been able to use the state of a struct as an intermediate value, which uh, enables us to iterate through another type. So the very first thing that we looked through was a uh, uh, effectively using the enum and implementing iterator inside the enum itself without any state. Uh, and now we're kind of storing it later. Um, this will be useful when we need to store a random seed. Now, I would like to, uh, I'm just gonna clear the screen. Time for the finale. Who's excited? I know I am. I'm terrified, a bit of work. Um, now, uh, I'd like to, um, I'm just gonna copy paste something in here. I hope you don't mind because, <laughs> I'll definitely get this wrong. 
So if you go to this paper here, and let's like hunt it up, hunt for it, because it's um, quite neat. It's really, really accessible. I don't read crypto papers uh, at all, but this one is by a statistician. It's really interesting. It's really short and really good. Uh, actually, I'll just post that in the chat so that everyone can play, like read at their own leisure. There you go. Uh, now he's in the Journal of Statistical Sciences, which is the R, uh, the R journal. Uh, let's see if that comes up with anything. Oh, here we go. Cool. So XOR shift RNGs. And um, it's taking a long time. So if you see something like that on your screen after you look at, uh, for it, you know, you've gone to the right place. And it's super fast, super simple, and pretty good. Um, but not cryptographically secure. <laughs> so, uh, so stick with someone else's crypto implementation, please, rather than doing it yourself. But um, we're going to be implementing his code uh, really fast because it's actually really super simple. So just like we started our year, we're going to start with um, a struct which can hold state. And the, set, the state that it's going to hold is a 64-bit unsigned integer. Now, uh, as before, we're going to implement, we need to bring the implement uh, we need to bring the iterator trait into local scope before we can define it for our custom type. So we'll do that. Uh, implement iterator. I will the full path syntax. Seglia. Now all we need to do here is type item. So our, oh by the way, if you're just brand new, uh, this trait is uh, was mentioned right at the start, and the heart of it is right here. All we want is uh, to define a type that we return as our item, and we need to re implement one method next, which returns an option of this thing. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, we want to be able to, we want to return item uh, u64 values because it's much, much simpler than having to cast around numbers. Now this is where the magic happens. Yes. I, still really, I still feel like I'm going to get shot down by something. Uh, rip written open again, second time in half an hour. So uh, if this syntax isn't clear, it's not a concrete type here. These are actually type variables. So self refers to this thing. And item is in here. All right, so we're returning U64s. Now, if you can, uh, hopefully you won't judge me for uh, looking and trying to copy uh, <laughs> what I've already got written down, but it's tricky. So this is going to look ridiculous because these look like completely arbitrary numbers. But if you read the paper, you find out that he has gone to the lengths of basically testing every single integer combination of bit shifts and, oh, sorry, XORs and left shifts and right shifts, and found the combination that is uh, closest to uh, cryptographically secure that you can get, and for U64, so an unsigned integer. This is what uh, the values are, 21, 35, and 4. Those parameters are uh, defined for several types uh, all over the show. Um, like for, for like 16-bit through, I'm pretty sure it's 16-bit all the way through to um, 64, as well as uh, signed and unsigned values, they're all different. So 
hopefully you won't think I've cheated <laughs> by, by just uh, like this is the simplest but fastest um, random number generator that you would have encountered before hopefully. Um, if you have think I've cheated, well, I can refund your ticket for the show, I suppose. Uh, any, any, anyone interested in the, what's if anyone's favorite number? I'm going to go for one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> and we're going to use, um, uh, the same pattern that we did prior, which is to take a few values. And in this case, we might as well take 10, is a reasonable number of values to take. And we'll call collect again. I won't trick you in saying that we need this because you already demonstrated that. So, um, we need to actually tell collect and sort of inform collect via a type parameter that we want to collect our U64s into a vector. Uh, there's another way of doing this called the, um, which is my favorite, um, Rossism actually. It's called the Turbofish um, syntax. We can either add it there or wherever we want. Um, so what do we do with these guys? Um, we print them out. So actually we could do something slightly more interesting, uh, but we won't because I'll wrap up pretty soon. Oh, oh, he says, you know, this is. <sighs> Typical. Sorry, the turbo fish is actually itself got double colon and brackets. Then I get. Help. <laughs> I love that. Uh, oh, a rand. Okay, that's not useful. RNG. Thanks, Rust. Oh? Oh, okay. Ba boom Okay, super. There we go. <laughs> you have learned all about iterators and all about random number generators, or at least one particular one. Um, I hope that you've had a whole bunch of uh, really fun time. I, really don't, I hope you've had an, an enjoyable stream. Uh, I will hopefully see you later. So I'm trying to get a, uh, do a fairly regular cadence with us, hopefully a couple of times a week. And so just uh, the easiest way to get in touch if you'd like to follow along uh, is to send me a message on Twitter probably and, uh, and recommend me any sort of topics or subjects, if I can cover them in 20, 30 minutes. Um, we'll see if I can get another stream. Hey, no, um, Mr. Embrace or Mrs. Embrace or Ms. Or, uh, <laughs> I, um, oh, look, we've got lots of people saying thank you. That's really nice. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, if there are some kind of pro streamers out there, um, I'm sort of new to the game and uh, more than happy to take any advice. So, with that, I will I'll wrap up here, but I'll keep the I'll keep the chat open, and uh, otherwise I'll see you on Twitter. And uh, with that, I shall uh, I'll wave goodbye. Bye, team. <laughs>